Hello everyone. Welcome back to day two of Illustration Week. How's everyone doing? What'd y'all learn from Kathleen? We were checking out um, the last stream. Did you learn how to make a super cool invitation? I hope so. So, I'm Ren. This is Nathan, folks. I'm Nathan. Welcome back. Thank you kindly. Good to be back with you guys. Thank you all for joining us from all over the world. Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Words. Where are you all joining from today? Tell us where you're at. We're here in San Francisco. It's around lunchtime. Yeah, you know, uh, San Francisco is an exotic location, but if you feel like you're in somewhere much more exotic, we especially want to hear about it. Definitely. Um, so we are the second to last stream of the day, but let's bring up that schedule to see what's going on uh, tomorrow and right after us. So in case you missed it, we were with Bobby and Kay earlier, and Kathleen was showing us um, that daily creative challenge. Um, and then we have Anna Daviscourt with Ari after us. And um, tomorrow, everyone's streaming again for the third and final day. We're in very good company. Yes, we are. A lot of talent here this week, including yourself. Oh, shucks. <laughs> um, some right, reminders for what we have coming up later in the stream. Um, in half an hour, we have our chat and win, and really exciting today, we're giving one away uh, Nathan's print of what he's been working on uh, yesterday and I, the rest I of the week. I better do a good job. You better do a good job. I think <laughs> we'll anything it, you do is yeah, just, amazing. I, I'm going to make sure it's good just for you who wins the print. Definitely. Nice and sparkly. Um, so after that, um, at the one hour mark, we're going to be looking at submissions um, for that creative challenge. Um, if you don't know what the creative challenge is for today, we're um, doing a summer uh, event invitation using Photoshop CC. Um, you can find more info about that in the challenge tab on be.net slash live. Um, and then um, if you're tuning back in from yesterday, Nathan also had a little homework assignment for you all. Um, did anyone get a chance to do that? Um, if not, um, Nathan could give a, a reminder of what, what he gave yesterday. We were talking a lot about unity with variety. We were talking about unity with variety. And so how about, uh, I know some of you guys are checking in for the first time today mm -hmm. and weren't with us yesterday. I can throw that back out at the end because for those of you who have been with us, I have another homework assignment for you tonight. And so do the challenge. I want you to do the challenge tonight, but I have a homework assignment for you each of our three days, and I want you to hold that. And at the end of the week, whenever you can find a free minute, there are three exercises that I think can really help you bump up your color game. So at the end here today, I'll review yesterday's assignment, give you a new one, and I have one more for you tomorrow. I think art homework assignments are the best homework mm -hmm. assignments, if you're going to get homework. Um, so, some of you are joining from Utah, Belgium, uh, Norway, lots of places around the world. Yeah. Um, I missed some of those from earlier. Um, Rob Generet, the third, is in the house. Hey, Rob. Uh, hi, Na Nadid, Anita, Robin. Some of y'all have exotic names. It's hard to pronounce. I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and I hey saw Belle. one person just threw out the 20-stroke landscape challenge that I talked oh, yeah. about yesterday. Uh, we all know that, you know, we do life drawing for study, for practice, and as art. And we all know, you know, doing a two-minute gesture, a five-minute gesture, figure pose is an incredibly valuable exercise. So thank you for bringing mm -hmm. that up. Uh, so I try and bring that same kind of thinking to landscape painting. It's so hard, landscape painting, uh, so complicated, so why not? treat it the same way we treat the figure. So my challenge is think it through and see if you can do a little landscape sketch, limit yourself to 20 strokes, see what you come up with. It might not be great every time, but what you learn from it will be invaluable. So thanks. Thanks for the shout out. And if you need some inspiration, definitely check out Nathan's Instagram. He has a lot of those uh, landscape 20 stroke um, images. They're amazing. Um, so that's Nathan Falk's art um, on Instagram. Um, we also have Morocco joining us, Australia. Desiree's from Florida. We have so many places around the world. Cleveland, it's amazing. Ohio, Cleveland, Poland. That's a very exotic location, Cleveland, definitely. Um, so you wanna jump in? I will jump Let's in. Let's get started. Yeah, so I, um, you guys know who I am, but some of you are joining us again today for the, for the first time. And so 
I'm Nathan Fowkes. I'm an animation concept artist. Uh, that's my trade, but I sneak in traditional painting uh, as my personal thing whenever I can. But I've had the opportunity to work for some companies where I've had to go through a steep learning curve. I started my career at DreamWorks Animation. I was there for 15 years. And after that, I went independent, just jumping from whatever projects uh, came along. So since then, I've, I've worked with Disney, Paramount Animation, Digital Domain, Blue Sky Studios. And so I've tried to get around the block as much as I can. And so our goal is, you know, taking on the challenges of those projects has required some pretty scary color design. And I, I'm trying to be upfront with you guys about how challenging that is and how beneficial it is to have simple principles that'll take us the distance. So you see up on your screen, you see emotion and mood because our topic yesterday, we talked about a foundational principle of unity with variety to get a compelling color palette. And what we've got to do now, we've got to kind of stack, build on top of that foundation and get to emotion because if we're gonna be artists, we have to have the technical and the artistic ability to reach out and grab our audience at that emotional level where art, where storytelling lives. Uh, if you don't make that connection, maybe you're not an artist yet, but however you feel, I wanna repeat something that we brought up yesterday because it's even more relevant today. Uh, we always have so much more to learn and we all feel inadequate when we see what everybody else is doing, you know, the, the high level pros. But whatever you might not yet be good at, the moment you develop the ability to connect with your audience at an emotional level, you are officially a real artist. And so that's our topic for today. We're gonna, we're gonna get you there. So let me just dive right in. Uh, here's a splash of color that we looked at yesterday, a uh, vibrant splash of color. So we've got to learn to take all the varieties of color, just grab it by the horns, wrestle it down to the ground and make it work for us. So I started out, uh, it's kind of apropos, uh, my first project was the Prince of Egypt, 20 year anniversary. And so I want to follow up with you because the principles that I learned coming up, going through this movie and through my time at DreamWorks, even though we started traditionally, they are even more apropos today. Because if you take time-honored traditional knowledge and you combine it with the digital tools, you'll be unstoppable. And so uh, here I am, uh, 20 years ago, 22 years ago, we started in 1996 on this project. So there I am, uh, Ren was teasing me about my full head of hair back, <laughs> uh, back in the day. But uh, that's me in my office painting my little heart out. And by the way, uh, I hope you like the painting that I'm working on. But if you like the painting I'm working on, that means you love our artistic supervisor and stylist, Paula Sane. This is me right at the beginning. We had a short training period. And so I'm copying one of Paul's beautiful acrylic paintings to get into the style, to get into the technique. This was my very first project in animation. So that's me going through my training period there. I also particularly love the uh, ketchup and mustard bottles. Yeah, a pull of what I assume is paint. No, it's, it's ketchup and mustard. Yeah. yeah? Is that what you're um, painting with? So you, we were painting with acrylic. Some mm -hmm. people ask what brand. We were uh, pretty straightforward. We used uh, Liquitex and Golden brand. We also used uh, a little bit of cell vinyl acrylic colors. All of those are still available today. I still paint in acrylics from time to time. Uh, I must have done, I did something like 80 paintings for that movie all in acrylic, so good times. So, you know, uh, you guys, you've seen that famous Microsoft photograph of, uh, of a rough looking bunch of people who changed the world. Uh, this is our rough looking bunch of people. Uh, this is the art department for the Prince of Egypt. No, we did not go to Egypt for our painting tour. We went to Death Valley. We went to Death Valley, California to paint the desert. So here we are out uh, in the heat of the sun. We went in October, so we didn't die in the 130 degree heat. But I'll show you a couple of the sketches. Here's my little setup. Here we are out in the desert painting the dunes. And uh, this was just, I had just started on the movie. It was one weekend. And here's a few sketches. These are just quick sketches from Death Valley trying to capture the immediate light, 
trying to keep it down. You know, the light's gonna change within an hour, and so I'm trying to keep these pretty quick. I'll just roll through a few of these sketches for you to take a look at. In this case, I'm painting with watercolor and gouache. So gouache is an opaque watercolor medium. And uh, I'll just roll through a few of these here for you. And I'm just trying to be gestural, trying to use my brush stroke to give the lay of the land, the direction, find those hues, those color hues, those color saturations, and those values, as you recall from yesterday, those are our three properties of color, hue, saturation, and value. Okay, so the sun's setting over Death Valley. And uh, in this one, uh, good times for everybody because the wind kicked up, sandstorm came, you can see the sand starting to blow up off of the dunes there. And if you like those textures in the background that you see, that's actually from sand that blew onto the wet paint and stuck. So we bailed, I got this far into this painting and we bailed, we went back to the hotel and uh, you know, wash the sand out of our hair and out of our clothes. It's very realistic texture yeah, then. Very, this is authentic <laughs> texture right there. Okay, so back to that splash of color. We've got to get into mood, right? So let's take that splash of color, let's limit it. One of our ideas from yesterday was an important part of making our images work is what we don't put into them. What we leave out can be critically important. And that's what a color mood is. You're choosing your color palette, you're leaving everything else out. So you really focus in on that emotion. So this feels quite different in emotion than the previous splash of color. And so I wanna keep with the Prince of Egypt theme. And here's one of the uh, frame capture from the Prince of Egypt. And so that splash of color, it's a very specific mood. And here we have a moody, emotional moment out in the desert. And so I'll go to one more, very different emotion again. And the good news is, Emotion is intuitive, and, and uh, we have emotion in common. And so you can go with your intuition on what colors bring a certain emotion to you and bring a certain emotion to your audience, because I think all of us feel the difference as we jump from here to here in the emotional change. Here's another scene from the movie that follows that timber, very dramatic, frightening, scary, dramatic. And it's always important to remember to use all three properties of color, either together or by themselves. So the lack of color, value only, lights and darks, can actually be an important color statement for this very tragic moment in the show where we wanted to suck the color out. And even more so, we can go, we can keep the uh, desaturation, but bring it up in key. And now it's become ashen and lifeless which was the key for the follow-up scene here, a real tragic part of the scene. And by the way, uh, these aren't specifically my paintings. These are screen captures out of the movie from, you know, from the art department, uh, a contribution from everybody on the team. Let's go into a green then. Let's kind of complete the variety of colors that we're hitting. So here's kind of a spooky scene uh, in the throne room, uh, meant to be kind of an eerie kind of a moment. And so we switch to a palette that tends to suggest that idea emotionally to the audience. Okay. And then yellow, getting back into the heat out in the desert, uh, Death Valley or Egypt to really feel that burning heat. Okay, so that is in a sense a color script. That's taking the audience on the ups and downs, the roller coaster ride of a movie to really elicit their emotion, to take them down to those lows, take them down to the highs, and really have the audience feel like they've had an experience. Uh, I, the, the comparison I like to make, uh, Ren, I don't know if you're a jazz fan, but the, oh, the, yeah. the jazz musicians say, you know, if you wanna get up, you gotta get down. And that's especially true for color. So what we're gonna do today then, and I'll, I'll show you a few more images because I wanna get you to some actual color script work for some of these animated movies that I've had a chance to be a part of. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take yesterday's painting and we're gonna change the emotion. We're gonna push it in different color and lighting palettes and really try and see if we can pull a variety of emotions out of that. So jumping forward, my tenure at DreamWorks, 
Uh, we did uh, we did the Shrek movies. I didn't work on all of them, but I got to work on a few of the Shrek projects. Uh, I worked on The Legend of Puss in Boots. And this is an illustration that several people uh, contributed to. And uh, this is my version. I, I got to wrap up the image. And so I want to show you how the pipeline worked for us in taking the initial concept and then getting it onto the screen. So here's our concept. We meant for it to be very operatic, very theatrical here. And uh, some of that unity with variety we talked about yesterday, all the unified cools and neutrals with the warms popping out and there's a little bit of magic in that handheld box. You see the guy working uh, in the middle. Very operatic shadows. We were definitely going for that kind of a feel in the movie, uh, our lighting. Uh, we, we were always thinking of what would they do in the drama of an opera. Okay, so on the basis of that, then the scene is modeled, it's laid out, the 3D set is created. Then it goes to the digital lighters. They refer back to the illustration and create the lighting. And it looks pretty good. I, I, I hope you like it, but the art director felt like that it was too much brown on brown on brown at this point. It could have a little more life, a little bit more richness. And so we referred back again to the illustration and some of those cool temperatures in the foreground let the warms really have a richness, really pop, you know, take the audience down and then bring them back up. And so we took that, uh, the art direction was to bring that back in. And so here's the final scene. You see that richness and that pop has come back in. Uh, I hope you like it because this is us trying to get that dramatic operatic kind of a feeling. And it's such a difference from the initial um, rendering they had. You know, Ren, I often tell my students, uh, it's often that last 10%. And sometimes, it's one of the most common uh, questions that students ask. How do you finish an, an image? And the answer to that question, there's, there's a lot of very different answers to it. But um, uh, the biggest answer to that is, Number one, you make sure what's most important, you're, you decide what's most important in the image and give those elements contrast. You give them, um, remember our three properties of color, it can be value contrast, it can be hue contrast, it can be saturation contrast. It can also be things like shape contrast, which you very much see in this one with the cast shadows, and also edge contrast. A hard edge will always attract the eye, and a soft edge will let the eye go. So uh, that's often how we make sure, even a sketch, how do you do a quick loose sketch? How do you make it feel finished? You give it the appropriate crisp, contrast in the important parts. And so that's where we're hitting in this image. And so color design, you know, the last 10% of your image can be a make or break. And often it's that little tweak of color contrast that makes a difference. Okay. I have a so, comment from yeah. D that's actually an interesting um, segue into the other side of color. What do you do if you're colorblind? I have an answer for you. Okay, so I'm not gonna give any names because I'm gonna throw out a deep, dark secret. Are you ready for this? No, I'm not colorblind, that's not the <laughs> secret. That would be that would be a shocker. The, yeah, Oops. it would. Uh, so there's one of the, uh, I, I teach classes. I've, I've taught uh, uh, in LA, I've, I've been teaching for quite a while, and uh, I, I've been teaching classes on the ground in Los Angeles, and now I teach online. But uh, one of my students, uh, came and took my classes, and he's the son of one of the Disney legend artists. Not the most well-named, but one of the classic, you know, worked on the classic movies. And he told me, and I'm not gonna tell you who it is, his son told me his dad is colorblind. Wow. It's true. Here's what he would do. So he had standard red, blind, uh, red green color blindness, and so he did two things. Uh, one of them all of you can do, and the other one, I, I guess you have to have a good friend or a spouse, because every day he would take his paintings that he was working on, put them in a satchel, take them home, and show them to his wife. And she'd be like, no, that's not working. You know, use, you know, put more blue in there. You know, and she would help him when it, when it wasn't working. But the thing that's relevant is, possibly the most important of the three properties of color is value. 
lights and darks. If you get your lights and darks, if you have a great light dark design, your painting will work no matter what colors you put on it. Color will bring it up, it'll be more emotional, it'll be better, but if you have that foundation of light and dark, of value, your painting will be good every single time. Uh, I have a friend, I'm not gonna name him, He's a concept artist, fairly well known in video games. And it's true he does more techie type stuff, but he puts color in it. He's colorblind. His color actually looks pretty good. He relies on warm and cool colors for contrast, which he can see pretty well. And he relies on design of shapes, interesting design of shapes, and a value, lights and darks. So I mentioned at the top, that you know we're laying a foundation that we're trying to build on that foundation and so I'm, I'm so glad you threw out that question because that's part of that rock solid foundation that the rest of us can then build color up on top of there you go d don't All let right. color limit you or lack lack no, of color I, yeah I, I don't know if it's you specifically or someone you know but there's no uh there's no reason to slow down mm -hmm. because of that all right so I'll go ahead and jump to the next image because uh, we're talking about uh, the legend of Puss in Boots, you know, fun, splashy kind of show. Uh, there was a lot of discussion, you know, should it look like the Shrek world? Should it be different? And the director was very specific. He wanted it to have a, a real magic in its lighting to kind of maybe separate a little bit from the Shrek world and being more sparkly, more colorful, to find ways to bring magic in it, even though there's not actual magic in the show except for one one particular element. So it turns out, uh, myself, I was the very first artist on the show and just two weeks later, the fantastic Marcos Mateo Mestre uh, joined up. And he is an extraordinary layout artist and, and every other kind of art. And so we went through the script, we identified the key moments, what we felt were key moments in the script, and then Marco sketched out ideas, sketched out like line drawing layouts, and then I became the color and light illustrator. I took it from there. This is our beat board, we called it, an emotional beat board, just trying to find a direction for the show. So we do this, we show it to the, uh, you know, the production designer, the director, we get their feedback and develop it from there. And on the basis of that, I roughed out this kind of overarching color script, just kind of flowing from one scene to the other. And hopefully you can see, you know, we're, we're introducing with some drama, uh, a shaft of sunlight in there to grab the audience. We take them into some magic, some warm and cools, and then we take them down into a mood you see in the second line getting moody, but we gotta bring them back up, right? And so at the end of the second line, you see really coming in with the sunshine, and then bringing it down into some conflict in the third line, lots of action and drama, and going to a deeper and murkier red in the uh, beginning of the fourth and final line, and then going deep and dark and you know all is lost, but then pulling it back out at the very end. And so that's that roller coaster ride that we want our storytelling to have, and we've got to use the color and the light to create that emotion. I think that's a great practice um, as well. Like, it, it's very relevant for animation, especially. But you can take any film and rewatch it and really focus on the way they use color to um, depict mood. That's a you can you can study any film. Your favorite film? Uh, yeah, it's I've done that before. It's true, uh, uh, especially in animation. But you mm -hmm. know, any live action movie you feel like has a real sparkle of design. And if you're looking for reference, it takes a little effort, but you know, pick your favorite visual movie or animated movie, and then go through it, maybe pull some frame captures out of it, just what you feel are key moments, and then maybe line all those up, put them together on a page and see how they flow. And you'll see, you'll get some really good ideas about color and lighting design, and how they're really trying to pull the audience in, uh, in, in different kinds of directions. The first, uh film series that comes to mind is Harry Potter, of course. Mm -hmm. As he's um, growing up, the films get darker and the color palettes change completely from the beginning, really warm, and then you have super desaturated yeah. and cold by that last film. Yeah, and uh, uh, color designers, they'll do a pull all kinds of tricks. They'll do things like, there's a villain, and every time the villain shows up, the villain, no matter where they are, no matter what happens, the villain will have a, a blue rim light. You know, they'll find an excuse to get kind of a rim light 
always on that villain, or there'll be a particular maybe a, a color associated with the villain. You know, the villain shows up and things go red. Just little cues to help you feel it, because uh, especially in an animated movie, uh, they're, they're typically 90 minutes long. The scenes are sometimes just a second or two long. And so they have to have an instant read. The audience has to look at them and boom, instant read. And so we have to give all kinds of cues to really let the audience feel what the story is. I remember on, on Sinbad, one of the things I, I show my students all the time, there was one particular scene where Sinbad, uh, this DreamWorks movie, uh, there's all kinds of chaos happening, and there's a risk of him kind of getting lost in the shuffle, even though he's meant to remain the main character. He wears red. So what we did is we turned the environment green, so that in all the chaos, that red would always pop, and the audience would always be keyed on him, so we could really hold on to the storytelling and the character. Wow. Oh, um, I'm seeing a couple of examples in the chat that folks are bringing up as well. Coco. Yep. Amazing color design and uh, Life of Pi as well. So if, Amelie had some very strong yes, color yes. design in it. So uh, you guys, if you haven't seen any of those films, take a look at them. Uh, take a look at you know, The Prince of Egypt as, as well. If you haven't seen that movie, you need to. Good times. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, we're proud of it. 20, 20 years, oh, oh my gosh, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like five years ago somehow. Time flies. Definitely. Okay, well, so here's one more color script uh, for you from, uh, we, we showed a little bit from a, a Disney project yesterday. And so here's my color script for that show. And you see the same kind of a thing. We have kind of a moody introduction to suck you in. And that very first frame, and I, I think I can zoom Ooh, in touch for screen you laptop. a little bit. Yeah, it's true. My Everyone's making fun of me for... Uh, uh, for a, an HP, it's got uh, some perks for sure. <laughs> for my non Mac, let's let's go so we can see maybe maybe four at a time there. But um, so we start with something very moody uh, to introduce it, but specifically because we need to go to some magical sunshine in this show. And so, how much more magical is that sunshine going to look in the second frame if we start with something very brooding? In the first one, so much, so much of what we do as uh, as artists is about contrast. It, it is, I think, in terms of contrast. And now that I mention it, uh, I'm going to give you guys a little homework assignment right now to think about. You know, write it down, and then later on, let's say before before the week is out, before Sunday night, write a list of every kind of visual contrast you can think of. And you might just think of a couple of things in that list that I and a lot of other people will never think of. And you can build interesting images on a surprising kind of a contrast. You know, large versus small, light versus dark, warm versus cool, just to get started. But the list can go on endlessly. So we go in in the first line, you know, we have our magic, we have our sunshine, we're in Never Never Land, you know, Peter Pan's Never Never Land. And then uh, the second line, there's uh, some, some fun sunshine, lots of local color being the color of the objects. Uh, there's, a, there's a musical number, the pirates are all singing, and so we want the blue sky, the rich local color. And by the way, here's another tip that you can think about. Yesterday, one of our topics was, there's the color and quality of light, and then its interaction with the local color of the object is hitting. Sometimes you want your image to be more about the local color of the object and you can do beautiful color design based on local color. Other times you want to be more theatrical. And what I mean by theatrical is based on the light. And so you might do something more dramatic, light, strong light, strong shadow, less local color. And your design will be based on the color of the light and the shapes and patterns of the shadow. I hate to interrupt, but that countdown Countdown it's time. Out. Okay. Fireworks are flashing. It is time for chat and win. So Let's as a reminder, um, we ha are giving away a print of Nathan's. Um, that working on that illustration um, yesterday, we're going to work on that a little bit more today, and he'll be giving away that print. Um, so jump in the chat. Um, tell us your favorite color that you like to work with in um, images. That's a good good way to jump in. Jump in, chat hype. Get in there. And I 
thanks for coming in, jumping in. We got people saying what colors they like, orange, reds, blues. The entire rainbow coming up. And so we'll be announcing the winner of that in a second. Okay. Be popping up above my head. Yeah, it's moving fast. Thank you guys for checking in. Yeah. It's moving almost faster than I can see. Definitely. Do you have any, I, I, I know the mood needs to change, especially when you're working on films, but do you have any favorite colors when you're, you're working on films? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, uh, what I'm gonna show, what I love to do, and I try not to overuse it, is I love to really group things so that something special can pop out. And so I like to pick, uh, let's call it, I'm not gonna give a color, but I like to call it the color surprise. Just something a little bit unexpected that pops out. Uh, and so we'll just go with the idea of a color surprise. You're just all about the unity with variety. All right, we have our winner, Anita. All right. Congratulations, you're gonna be winning one of Nathan's prints. All right, very so exciting. Anita, I'm, I'm gonna do my very best just for you. Uh, to get that print pulled together. So uh, today and tomorrow we'll be working on that for you. So congratulations again. Congrats. All right, yeah, yeah see sparkles. Uh, <laughs> shoot, uh, uh, see it should have been, uh, it should have been drab boring instead of sparkles and fireworks. Yeah. Because now we have to jump back to my work uh, <laughs> after that. It's just a self burn, Nathan. <laughs> Okay, well, at least we're in, uh, you know, luckily we weren't in the kind of the, this, the low moody moments, but let's go to that because we have, you know, we have the musical number, the pirates are singing. So from there, things quiet down, you see the ship sails into the clouds and things really get brooding. You see the skull, skull island, the, the sun sets and we really try and establish the mood and there's magic that happens. So you see the splash of blue in the top center there. Uh, there's a magical quality happening that we're now introducing, and it really slowly takes over there. And so uh, we go through that mood, we go down uh, into the hull of the pirate ship, and things are scary, things are dramatic. The sun starts to rise, an escape happens, there's a chase, and then we go in, we need a dra dramatic wrap up, right? So uh, I'm intentionally going at the end here, I'm jumping into a high contrast, going for a warm and cool high contrast. Of course, we have to have a sword fight and uh, really wanna take advantage of the sword fight. And if you guys ever get a chance, uh, do, do concept art on a sailing ship if you ever can, if you're looking for a subject, because you have all that rigging and all those sails, you can cheat any shadow that you want. You want a shadow falling across the face, you want some lines along you know, the ground, any shadow shape you want, you can justify it because there's always sails and rigging overhead. That was, I love that about the show. We could just cast all these groovy shadows wherever we wanted for design and for shape. So uh, that was the color script for that show. I'll just go back full screen. I got a question in the yeah. chat um, about picking colors. Mm -hmm. um, how do you choose colors, especially, we're seeing a combination of colors in a lot of these frames. Yeah. Um, is what decisions are being made when you choose combinations of colors to, to work on instead of that monochromatic look? Yeah, you know, in the end, it, it's a huge discussion, and in the end, you have to go with your gut. But it's back to that idea we talked about yesterday uh, of unity with, unity with variety. And so, uh, moody colors, uh, actually, I'll, I'll show you guys something here. And just a reminder that there are uh, tw about 24 minutes left until um, those challenge submissions need to be in for Nathan and I to review them. And don't worry um, if you don't get them in in time. Uh, Anna will be reviewing those after us. All right. Count the, the countdown ticks down. Yeah, I love that smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about going with your gut. You know, uh, warm colors can be very effervescent. And, and happy, but to really make that work, 
They need cool accents. If you have warm on warm on warm, it can be kind of hot and sweaty. But if you have a rich warm palette and you add a few cool accents, maybe there's you know blue skylight, warm sunshine, blue skylight, or maybe warm firelight and cool moonlight, you can really get the, the happiness of it. Uh, cool colors are a little bit more moody. Uh, that is your finest work you've met, Nathan. <laughs> this is, yeah. Uh, this is how I got my job on yeah. the Prince of Egypt. This I was, would hire you. This was my initial portfolio right, right here. Uh, but um, uh, when you don't have those warms, if you don't have those accents, then you very much go into a lower key mood. So if you go into the blues, the purples, you know, the, the um, uh, the cool greens, you very much can get a mood. And one other thing you can think about is natural versus artificial. If you have like, let's say a lime green light source, that doesn't exist in real life. You know, on, on the earth, uh, there's not really a natural light source that's this ultra lime green. So it's gotta be one of three things. It's either people, it's artificial, an artificial light, it's magic, or aliens because it is not natural, it's supernatural. It's always aliens. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, that's a great, when, when you want a, a magic of color, you really want something that, that is out of this world, create light sources that are a light source that doesn't happen in real life. A deep purple light source, a green light source, colors like that that are in those, you know, they, they move away from the standard warm and cool that we get in real life. That was a. Great, great question. Glad we could follow up on that. Okay, and so with that, I think we can jump into Photoshop and keep working with yesterday's image. Are we good to go? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. All right. Okay, so here's our image from yesterday, and uh, I, I will fess up. I, I liked how the image turned out uh, yesterday, and I, I did a little. I did a few tweaks last night. I took a look at it and pushed and pulled a little bit to fine tune a couple of things. Just uh, you know, a few strokes to get some perspective in there and to uh, balance the warms and cools a little bit more. So here's what we've got to do now. We've got to take this image and we've got to bring it into a new emotion. We have, you know, we have kind of a, a nice moody kind of uh, atmospheric light coming into this and we need to now give it something different. And so I want to take this image and push it in a couple of different directions to show how very different the exact same location can feel just with some simple color changes. And we're going to run with this. I'm going to keep at this. Tomorrow we're going to come back into this image. We're going to do several variations just like the color script that I just showed you guys. We're going to do several variations and then I think we can lay them out uh, as you would a color script and kind of see the ups and downs of the emotional response from those. Okay, so let's dive in here. I'm gonna make a copy of this. And uh, what I wanna do initially, right now I'm relying on shadow. And one thing I feel like is underrepresented in portfolios is a strong quality of light. Uh, People can put down interesting shapes and then throw a few filters over them and get mood that way and there's nothing wrong with it. But sometimes I see portfolios that rely on that with, that don't appear to have a real understanding of getting a good quality of sunshine. In this business and in the kind of art that many of us do if you're creating pictures of any kind, you've got to have a range. You've got to have a full range of abilities. So I want to dive right into that. Edwin asks if it is necessary to nail down your fundamentals before studying color. Yes, but I think you should get your color fundamentals right up front. So as you're laying your foundation, you kind of have an idea, you're, you're laying them with purpose knowing where you'll go with color from there. So absolutely, uh, draftsmanship, drawing, perspective, uh, you've got to get those skills down. But you should start on, you know, watch, watch the tutorial. There are tutorials out there, you know, on color and such. And you should start getting those ideas uh, in mind now as you, uh, as you get, your, uh, get your perspective down. 
Great answer. So what I want to do, the sunshine, I really want it to pop. Let's call it theatrical sunshine. In fact, since I've been talking about opera, let's call it operatic sunshine. Uh, because I want it to be about the sunshine, meaning everything else is going to be less important. So I'm going to group what I have here. I'm going to go to my adjustment layers. I'm going to go into curves. Curves is interesting because you can select individual ranges of values to adjust without affecting other ranges. So I'm just going to I'm going to keep the darks where they are and put a little point there. But then I want to pull down. I want to pull down the midtones and I want to pull down the lights here. And that way, that kind of groups. What's already there is a little bit more similar. Remember, we're unifying, unity and variety. I'm unifying what's there so I can pull a variety of sunshine out of it. Okay, so I think that'll, that'll do the trick. I also, because I want a warm luminosity, I'm gonna put a little bit of warmth on here. I'll go to another layer, and I'm gonna go to color balance, and I'm gonna push the, uh, the reds a bit. In fact, I'm, I think I want to go to highlights here and push them into the highlights. A little there. And a little bit in the mid-tones as well, I think. And is this your usual setup in Photoshop, would you say? It is. Uh, most of us use a two-screen setup obviously uh, for, for monitor purposes, so we can show you everything mm -hmm. on one screen. I have all my palettes here, but typically uh, I, have, I have two screens, one screen for the image and the color picker I keep on that image as well. And then on the other screen, I have all of my palettes. So I have, uh, right here, I have the palettes kind of grouped together, you know, actions, properties, adjustments. I also like to have layers, channels, and history. I have those all separate on my other screen, but they're condensed for our purposes here today. Okay, so we have that color balance layer. I think we're good. Okay, so let me show you a little trick to lay out sunshine. If you're not exactly sure where you want the sunshine to hit, I'm gonna put up another adjustment layer. I'm just gonna bring everything brighter, brighter, the, the down, downside brighter, something in that range. And I want to do another color balance layer. Let's push a little yellow into that, a little more red. Keep a nice warm sunshine. Okay, then I'm going to group those two together so they're in the same group. And I'm going to put a layer mask on that. So layer mask will let me paint into it, paint out of it. I'm going to invert it, control I, command I if you're on a Mac. And then what I can do now is I can paint sunshine in there. And I can choose my shapes. So let me bring up, uh, yesterday we had masks up and I'm going to go to those. These are just channels that I've created using the selection tool. No, nothing difficult about it. So I'll bring one of those up. And I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to get some sunshine falling across here. That is such a great trick. Hitting a little bit over here. Maybe it'll even uh, catching a little there. We need to let me invert that. Actually, I'll just turn it off. And I can, I can hit. I can hit the X button. You see the foreground background down here? I can just reverse that and paint back out the layer mask. So it would be casting a shadow here, and I can just get that cast shadow in there. Just casting across here, soften that, a little light catching over there. And then I'll get that light falling across the ground. She says uh, she never thought of using curves, color balance, and masking to paint sunlight. I haven't either, but definitely going to try this out after the stream. So boom, we have sunshine hitting in the foreground. I will say, though, that that is, even though I've warmed it up, it's not good enough. 
uh, the digital tools are amazing, but we have to ultimately be the one that picks the color rather than the digital tools doing that. So that's what I need to do now. Let me get a little, let me bring my mask back up. Andy asks um, if you make uh, time for research, um, you know, for locations, for looking up like buildings and vegetation to keep consistency, um, or are there people who do it for you in the industry? Um, or do you go on, you go on site a lot, I, I know, to just do landscape painting. Yeah, I'm always out. You know, I'm a, a sketchbook fanatic. I have a little uh, a little kit. I'm, I'm going to show you guys tomorrow. I'm actually going to show you my little landscape painting kit uh, as, a, as a compliment to what we're doing here. And uh, so I, it's a little, you know, carry it with you everywhere you go. Uh, so I, I definitely... I definitely do that, but research is very important, and uh, here's here's why it, it's critical. You know, I, I get asked the question sometimes: uh, Is it okay to look at reference and, and research? You know, or am I being am I not being myself? Am I relying too much on other sources? Well, you know, you've got to find that line and make that decision. But in concept art, in animation, video game design. You're jumping from studio to studio, different studios. At each studio, you're working on different projects. You know, we've been in, in Egypt, we've been in ancient America, we've been under the ocean, we've had a show in a garage, we've had every location, and then within a movie, you jump to all kinds of different places. I do not have an expertise on all of those different places and what they're all about. So we, we definitely researched new locations. We even went um, on Shark Tale. There's a, there's a whale wash that's themed after a car wash. And so we were looking at car wash, like 1950s car washes <laughs> with kind of vintage styling. We were looking at that as a reference, getting ideas. So uh, always, there's so many good ideas out there. There's so much available that you can draw on. Uh, let's call it uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, there's so much there that you can stand on top of. and and lift up. Another person, I forget where I got the quote from, apologies, but I heard somebody say, uh, uh, milk a lot of cows, but churn your own butter. Uh, I, I think that's relevant. Definitely. Okay, so we've thrown some sunshine at this. And now, I'm gonna say we have green grass, and let's say that building is red. So now I've got a mask created just by that painting. I'm gonna select, let me go back to my layers. Okay, so I just uh, hold down the control or the command button and click on that mask that I have on that group. And now I can paint right into that light. So let me pick a color, put up a new layer. I'm gonna hide it, that mask is still there, but I uh, control H to hide it and go back to my red color here. And I also want to go to that mask. And I want to get a little color There we go. I want to get a little of that light hitting the character here as well. Just maybe catching, catching the side there. Okay, then we'll bring those selections up. So I got some nice reds in there. Let's keep going with that. And see, I, I, have, uh, I have a mask. It paints it exactly where I want it to be. Get a little bit more in there. Let's get, uh, let's pick up that purple. Remember, we're talking about local colors. This is local color that we're dealing with here. And so we're getting those local colors. Got to get the greens in. Pick up a little bit of that 
that green on the bush here. And we get some real richness. And yesterday we talked about being thematic, being purposeful in our images to make them really about something. And so this does that for us. It's not just, hey, we're gonna add sunlight to it. It's sunlight with a purpose, theatrical, operatic. Because if we take everything that we did here and we group it together, I liked our image from yesterday, but now there's more of a story to it. We're focusing in on the character. Maybe we're wondering who that is, what the location is, what's gonna happen next. And that's how we've got to engage our audience, draw them in and make them want more. That's, uh, uh, maybe that's the, the basis of the kind of art uh, that we're doing here and talking about here. Okay, and uh, I'm looking at the timer. Okay, we yeah. have about eight minutes. Until uh, eight we get minutes. those submissions in. It's enough time to do another one, right? Yeah. Eight, eight minutes, let's do it again. Definitely, okay. speed round. <laughs> speed round. Okay, so we have that group. Let me, uh, I'm gonna turn that one off. Actually, let me put it together. So we have everything together in one group. I wanna pull that down. Bye, Aaron, thanks for joining. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna make, uh, I'll turn that one off, do another one. Make a copy, put it in a group. Okay, so I told you guys that I really like grouping elements to unify them, to pull something out. Let's go to an extreme with that. I'm gonna desaturate here, let's go moody. So I'm gonna take this, we'll just, uh, with adjustments and I'll just take the saturation down. We'll keep some of the color in, but keep it in a manageable range. And now I'm gonna go back to curves again because I wanna just, I wanna really now group the mid ranges together. So the highlights can pop, but the mid ranges will group with the shadows. So I want to pull those way down and see what we're already getting. We're already getting some drama. I want kind of some stormy drama coming into this. Now, the thing we have to be careful about is that when you do this over top of a color image, the values might be very interesting, but the colors will change in ways you didn't expect. You definitely got to go back in and do some repainting to really rework your color if you just rely on what accidentally happens with the layers, with the adjustment layers, they'll do some good things, they'll do some bad things. You gotta come back at the end and paint over and really pull it back together. But just like that, we have some drama ensuing there. And so all I have to do now, let's just maybe cool this down a little bit. Maybe push some blue purple into this to dramatize it. In fact, I wonder what'll happen if we push that even further. That's getting kind of scary. This could be a haunted um, place. We don't know. It's, it's definitely something like that. <laughs> Who is that person? Who are they hiding in that doorway? Okay. And uh, let's get that adjustment layer up. Push some blues into it. In fact, let me go highlight so it feels more like it's a, a lighting quality. Push it a little bit cooler. And for those of you in the chat, uh, don't forget you can ask Nathan anything you want. Um, he is happy to answer questions. We are here for you. Okay, and then let's pop that character back out then. Let's just put a little bit, get that color back. Heather says that 
Could be an alien invasion happening. There, there's an alien, yeah. Uh, well, I'll tell you why it can't be that. Because everybody knows when the, here we are in San Francisco, everyone knows that the Golden Gate Bridge has to collapse in a, a monster alien movie, right? Yep, yep. Something has to trash the Golden Gate Bridge. So that has to happen here in San Francisco. Um, but uh, I know we'll, we'll make an exception for this one. All right. Okay, and then I'll just put a few strokes. You know, there's a lot of contrast right up in this corner, and I'll just throw a few strokes at it to, uh, I'll just select the, the nearby color and, and kind of group, unify, maybe cool down what I've got going on there because I really want to pull, pull us out of that corner. Okay, so just like that, and it looks like this is a little heavily saturated here. I'll just do a paint over a little bit here. Let me bring my selection up. Select the sky, okay. And I can just calm down the saturation there. Those blues were a little heavy. And get a little nicer transition in there. And I'm gonna bring back a little bit of this gold. Uh, Anita asks um, if you're trying to go into visual development, do you have any just general tips? Um, she says she imagines studios want to see a lot of this type of work, a lot of color theory work. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, and, and definitely that's, that's a, a direction you want to go. Uh, you, you really got to show, now I'm not a character designer, uh, but for those of you who want to do some character design, you've got to show great characters. You've also got to show that you can really create a, a place, an environment. Not just design a good looking environment, but give it a sense of environment. Uh, apply, like we're trying to bring mood to an environment in this sketch. And if you have images that do that, they're great, well-drafted environments, uh, and they have a quality of emotion and storytelling, not just through the character, but also through the lighting and color design. And if you show a range, you know, show different kinds of story moments, show that you can tell a story in its entirety. And uh, you know, people will fall all over that in your portfolio. It'll really put you in a good way. It's back to, solid, proven foundational principles combined with that emotional connection and kaboom, uh, you've, you've got your audience and maybe you've got your first job based on that portfolio. Great, and uh, less than a minute to get those challenge submissions in if you would like Nathan and I to take a look at those. If you don't get them in, uh, Anna Davis-Court and Ari are gonna be on next. But I, I think we about got it here for our dramatic mood because what we've done is we've let that storminess kind of stay in the sky up there. Make a couple of strokes on that. We have 20, 20 seconds out. <laughs> so I'll just put a, a stroke or two to, to calm that down a tiny bit. But uh, we've got the stormy sky in the background for mood and then we're popping the character out and we've pretty much let go of everything else so that uh, our image is about something. It's about what's in it and about what's out. And I saw another question that just went off the screen. Um, I forget who, who said it, but um, should you be, if, if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, um, do you suggest starting from real life or photographs or a combination of both? I know you're a proponent for going out on the field? That is an excellent question. So uh, three things, and this is, this is uh, gonna be an obvious answer, but um, uh, there's so much out there that's well done that you can learn from. So master copies, and by master, I don't just mean old masters from the Renaissance or wherever. Any image you admire, you wish you could create images that are that good, do studies, do practice copies of those. That's number one. Number two, get outside, sketch, 
draw people, draw places, paint people, paint places, whatever, from life. And then third, sketch from your imagination, paint from your imagination to make sure that what you're learning, you're able to bring back out into your own ideas. Do those three things as your daily practice. And imagine, you know, 365 sketches later, one year later, think of uh, how much of a learning curve you'll have gone through. Yeah, so that was a great question. Yeah. And I'll be opening up the submissions in one moment. All right, submissions coming up. Yeah. And uh, I think we've got our image here. I, I don't know if we'll have, I think we'll have a few minutes uh, at the end. I might even be able to do one more tweak on this for today, but uh, I'll put all of this together so that we can see the difference. So our sunshine, our storm, and our original image. And hey, we have uh, the beginnings of a color script here. It's quite a dramatic shift in, in moods. And what we should have you do, uh, coming back from the challenge, if you guys wanna throw out, if you have any moods or emotions, that you'd like to see me tackle tomorrow. Maybe there's a particular quality of emotion for storytelling that, that might not seem intuitive or might be a big challenge. Throw that into your comments uh, whenever you can on the screen before we close up at two, two o'clock Pacific time. And uh, I'd be happy to uh, take a look at that, think it through tonight, mm -hmm. and we can take it on tomorrow. And just a reminder, uh, Nathan, if you want to talk about schoolism a little bit? Oh yeah, um, well, uh, pe people ask about, some people were asking about feedback and mm -hmm. that's where I'm able to give feedback. Yeah. So uh, schoolism.com, created by uh, our very own Bobby Chu, who all of you saw this morning. It was great to be back together with my good friend, uh, Bobby and, and also Kay. Uh, Bobby created schoolism and I'm uh, uh, one of the uh, one of the instructors uh, where we teach, uh, I teach what I believe to be the foundational principles because color and light design, composition, picture composition, environment design, and also painting, landscape sketching are the topics I cover there. And, uh, and so a few of you have asked uh, about feedback and where I teach. That's it, schoolism.com. Uh, I, I feel like we have a great online platform, so Definitely. thank you. I, I was shy to mention it, but thank no, you. No, it, it's a great way to, there are so many amazing classes on there. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to do schoolism yet, but I really want to. I'm proud of what we're doing. So. Yeah, it's fantastic. So let's take a look at all of the amazing submissions. All right. So first off, we have Igor's. I love the photograph behind it. Um, don't know where this is. It looks like a some sort of radio tower. Uh, the, the typeface feels very summertime. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, uh, and and the, it's a dramatic contrast between the uh, the greens yeah. and the uh, the magentas. Uh, there might could be a little soft band of, of yellow along the horizon mm -hmm. just to pull it a little into summertime and then mm -hmm. it would be perfect. Definitely. This is from Walter. All right, that definitely says pool Ooh, party. Yeah. I want to go to this pool party. Very cool. I, lo I love the um, complimentary colors here. We got the blue and orange. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like you're probably using a clipping mask or one of the Photoshop, yeah. one of the Photoshop masks that let you just, uh, you know, the, the digital tools are so powerful. Mm -hmm. And so you can, anything you can dream up, uh, if, if you know the tools and you know the, the principles behind the tools, you can make it pop. Yeah. This is from Heidi. Let's zoom in a little bit. Is that a, a flamingo pinata? That is <laughs> yeah. really adorable. Yeah, that's that's fun. You almost hate to see little kids bash that. <laughs> I know. They I would just want to take it gleefully just batter. You almost, you know, uh, at, at pinata parties, mm -hmm. I feel a little bit like Lord of the Flies. Yeah, ch children battering <laughs> things silly. But there's delicious candy inside. <laughs> you need it. There's a good um, reason for it. I also love the, um, I'm not sure how you did the tree, if that was, um, a brush with a scatter. Yeah, it looks or... like a, a fun a fun brush. Yeah. But it, yeah, it's a great way to just drop it in and be done, and it's simple and graphic. Mm -hmm. 
get in line to bash that flamingo. This is oh, from Linda. Nice. Uh, I, I like that a lot. It, yeah. Um, uh, a beach party. You know, uh, I, I, I live in Southern California. I, 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 I love it. I, wherever you live, every place has its charm, but um, you're at the beach while well, the sun sets and then you light the bonfire and someone gets out their guitar. Uh, there is just, there's not a better feeling mm -hmm. than that. And so we've been talking about emotional connection and that's what this image feels like. You know, every day is a beach party every day in Southern California. Party. Yes. This well, is from it's, Claire. Uh, it's like um, Ian McKig said. He said, yeah, to the detriment of concept art, uh, uh, Los Angeles has no weather. Yep. And so concept art that comes out of Los Angeles sometimes lacks weather. It was a lesson I had to learn. I had, to be, I had to be told by Ian McKig. <laughs> Your only weather is uh, fire season. Uh, then you get some, yeah. <laughs> some clouds there, right? Uh, I have stories about fire season oh, for no. another time. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Claire's. Beautiful. Love that Monet in yeah. the background. This is Rodney's. That feels great. Yeah. It's symmetrical, you can quickly, you know, you only have to do half of the image, half mm -hmm. of the design, and then you can, you can flip it. Yeah, one of the character designers at DreamWorks was opining to me, said, you know, we could do we could do our three model our three D characters in a fraction of the time just by doing half and flipping them, but uh, no one likes a symmetrical pose, so they have to make the pose very action oriented. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, when you can we can you can do half of an image, flip it, and you're done. Boom. For sure. Oh, that's nice. This is crystals. This is crystals. I love the texture on it. Yeah. And it looks like you have a photo collage going on around it. It's really great. You know, I, I wouldn't have thought of snails for the summer party, but it works. Just the, the texture of it, kind of like... Yeah. Um, I think those are seashells. Uh, are they seashells? Snail shells. It's snail or shells, or yeah. a hermit crab shells. Okay. I think so. Uh, like yeah, here. so you got the, got Beach the palm, snails. palm fronds. It yeah. Just, it feels, yeah, it feels good. Very summery. This is Caroline's. All right. I like the shape. Yeah, I got a little retro, yeah. uh, a little Beach Boys kind of 1960s mm -hmm. retro shape. This is Dierks. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Very colorful festival. This is Doritz. Got an illustrative spin going. I love that little sloth. Watermelon has great pop. Yeah, I got a little character in there. Mm -hmm. I was telling Kathleen earlier, I th I'm thinking of wearing a sloth dress tomorrow. So <laughs> stay right, tuned. Do it. Yeah, and on the previous one, I was just staring at it, trying to figure out if I could figure out what language it was. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, this is uh, Elf's uh, Van Hoofs. Uh, SF Inks. Yeah. Is it Sphinx, Sphinx? or is it? SF Inks? We're in San Francisco, so we want to say we, SF. We, we want to see SF in it, but yeah. that might not be what it meant. Yeah. I love this. It uh, just reminds me of uh, Lolita fashion in Japan. Super cute. This is Esther's. Really love the like sunset evening, evening colors going on. Great type. This is Heather's. Well, it has a nice mood to it. Yeah. Looks like you've, you've put together your own illustration mm -hmm. for it, which is always appreciated. Yeah, it has a nice quiet charm to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a garden party. It feels, yeah. it's a little, uh, yeah, though uh, if we get a couple hours into it, the, the, the color might start to pop into mm -hmm. it a little bit more, right? This is David's. All right. Really bright. That's. One of my favorite uh, gradient shifts is, is that pinky orange into purple. I think it's really beautiful. Yeah, and it has it has a little bit of an album cover, yeah. kind of the square shape, a little mm -hmm. bit of an album cover, kind of a color. I'd listen to that to album. <laughs> this is Faustino's. All right, California Beach. Yeah, that that's a 
Southern California beach party right there. <laughs> oh, nice. This is Photoshop bird. Love it. Oh, this this is a pool party here. I wish we had a pool here. Well, tell them tell them that we do. Tell them. there's there's a pool. We, we yeah yeah we we have a pool. We're going swimming right after yeah, this. We're gonna have definitely. a barbecue and go swimming. I lo love pool parties. I also want a watermelon um, floaty. I forget it, inner tube, inner tube. Love it. And then that was the last one. Back back to one. Yeah. These are all fantastic submissions. Really impressed with the variety. Um, some of them are illustrated. Some of them are have more of a graphic design bent. Um, really fantastic work. Well, so guys, throw out, um, if you have a color palette mm -hmm. or a mood, a particular emotion that you'd like to see us tackle tomorrow, go ahead and throw it out. And uh, let's see, we have about 10, 13 minutes yeah. to go. Let's finish this uh, up. So I, I can, uh, let me do one more very, I think we can get one more, just little five minute variation in mm -hmm. there. And then I've got your homework assignment for you. So okay, let's, great. let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna make a copy of this. And actually, I wanna go, I wanna take the mood, I, I wanna, take this in a new direction here. So I'm going to flatten that so I can work with it. And I'm going to take my sky selection. And I'm going to work in that. And I'm going to change this now to uh, just a simple moody nighttime scene. It won't take much. We just got to get the moon in there and get some moody moonlight happening. So I'll get up a new layer to paint into the sky. And I'll just cover up what we have here. I'm just going to throw the moon in there and then we'll cool down the color palette. I stuck a, snuck a little moon selection in there so we'll get that into white. You see already we have a nighttime scene here. That moon just came out of nowhere. <laughs> just how about that. But uh, yeah, um, you know, we really need to be able to take our time and think through our ideas. But at the same time, uh, uh, so often we have to really bang out ideas, being able to put aside the ones that just don't quite feel right. You know, be, be able to bang out five ideas and then set two or three of them aside and, and the one or two or three that you feel are working move forward. And so it's an important skill to have to work quickly. So just expand out from there. Let me, um, I'll select my sky again. <laughs> Rob says you mooned everybody. <laughs> <laughs> on, uh, yeah, on publicly on the internet. Live and in person. Live and in person. And uh, just a reminder for everyone, if you have not caught all of the amazing knowledge that Nathan has dropped on all of you in the past hour and 15 minutes, you can always go back and watch the replays uh, in the replays tab. I was, I, I'm definitely gonna go back and, and look at all of these techniques you've shown. You've shown a lot in the, in the past two days already. And Jarena, you did miss the submission deadline for this stream, but um, we have one more stream coming up with Anna Davis Court and Ari. So 
if you get it in before um, the end of their stream, uh, they'll be able to check it out. And a little bit of an adjustment to get the silhouettes in there. question for you, Nathan. Sure. Um, for your typical film or um, show, how many variations like of, a, of an initial scene like this do you have to knock out? Does it vary? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, it really varies dramatically. Some, mm -hmm. some ideas just go straight through and other ones you work on them and work on them and work on them. Just almost feels endlessly like you want to just give it to somebody else, say to have someone else take a stab mm -hmm. at it. Uh, so uh, you, you, you do it until everyone feels you, you uh, have gotten it right. But that's why it's so important to work on these skills so that you can you know, you, you gotta you gotta be able to go with the flow and move with the changes. And there's constant, you know, uh, great, you did a nice scene, but guess what? We just had a story meeting. You know, the drag you're talking to the director. We just had a story meeting, mm -hmm. and the daytime scene you just painted is now a nighttime scene. And now uh, it was supposed to be a happy moment, but now it's supposed to be a little sinister undercurrent to it. And you've got to make those adjustments and and roll with that uh, roll with that current. But uh, I'll throw a, a, a cool layer over here so we can prove a little bit more that it's moonlight. So we'll go to color balance again. I'll go to highlights to keep it uh, quality of cool a little bit more in the lights. And I just, I wanna show one, uh, we have time to make one little point here. I'm gonna push it into cyan here. And this tends to be a little bit more negative. It's, it's very cold, very neutral. There's a hint of greenishness to it. And so we'll call this negative moonlight. You know, it's not necessarily uh, the, the greatest, happiest, most effervescent nighttime moment ever. And we'll go with that. But let me just group together what I have previously. I'll make a copy of that, pull it up so I can work on it. Let's do a warmer moonlight, just meaning purple. And that'll have a more positive quality, just it'll have an element of warmth in it that'll take it in a little bit more positive of a direction. So let me go back into adjustments. And what? I One last question for you here. Yeah. Uh, Tiffany asks uh, if you use the rule of thirds to plan out your composition, or is it just natural for you? Um, not as such. Let's see if I have time to properly. Yeah, we have about six minutes left, right? Okay. Uh, it's a good question, and uh, this is where you see me uh, get kind of fussy uh, about things. And here I'll just finish this adjustment mm -hmm. layer. If we want to push it a little more purple, that's probably too purple. And while Nathan is finishing this up, I have a question for the chat. What has been your favorite um, mood so far that Nathan's touched on? Um, the moonlight one is really pretty. I um, love the technique used for the sunlight. So I think that's my favorite. Yeah, so uh, it was an excellent question. Let me answer that, and then it, uh, I think we'll have a, a minute mm -hmm. or two left for me to throw out your, your uh, let's call it your weak assignment, because homework tonight <laughs> is taking on the challenge, and then my, my assignments for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, rule of thirds. I hate the word rule, because it kind of has an always. And uh, maybe it's not you asking the question, but I've had some students coming through, you know, young, early in the learning curve, maybe 18 out of high school. And there's a little bit of attitude where if I just learn the proper rules, I can, I can deal with the complexity. But um, if, 
If there's a rule, you have to know why it works so you know what the exceptions are and when not to use it. And so I hate the idea of rule of thirds because often I'll ask my students, okay, rule of thirds, why is rule of thirds a good thing? And they say, well, uh, golden section. Okay, why is golden section a good thing? Well, because it's, I don't know, it's Greek, it's mystical, uh, you know. No, the reason rule of thirds can work is because it can break your scene up in an interesting way. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a focal area, if it's dead center, that's very formal, possibly boring. If it's right up against the edge, it's a little uncomfortable, you know, right up against the edge, feels like a tangent. But if you bring it roughly a third of the way in, it's not really a third, it just means it's not center and it's not uncomfortably close to the end. That's why rule of thirds work. If you don't know why rule of thirds work, don't ever use it. But if you know about being more formal, being more casual in the placement of your focal areas. Uh, so I tend to think about uh, things in those kinds of terms with more flexibility. Yeah, I personally think you can learn the rules to break the rules. So shall we run through yes. what we've got here? We've got okay. four minutes left. Yeah, all right, four minutes. So uh, we have a more, a little bit more of a positive moonlight. What I would do with this is I would sprinkle in to the buildings, just underneath, almost like reflections on water. Mm -hmm. What I would do next is sprinkle a little shimmer of reflections on that, and that would give it the sparkle and the, the love that it, it needs to be a little bit more positive. But we definitely get a spookier palette here with these kind of cyan, almost greenish quality. And so that's an emotional change, mm -hmm. just with a little tiny color tweak. And then jumping to our stormy drama here, where we're popping out the character and the storm, and then back to our uh, original image. And it looks like our, oh, our sunshine image is up on top. And so finally our, you know, let's kind of bring us back into the light of day to uh, take a look at your homework assignment. So I'll roll down here. Okay, simply this. Uh, these are just little abstractions uh, where I'm playing with color, th trying to throw color together in interesting ways, each time trying to make each frame emotionally different than the one before it. And so I feel like I ended up with a pretty good range here in, in fighting as hard as I could for each image to go into a different value palette, a different hue palette, different levels of saturation or three properties of color. So uh, think of the three properties of color and just do a variety of very quick sketches that deal with each of those individually or in combination, trying to elicit a different kind of mood each time. They can be abstract, just have fun with it, don't worry too much about it, but that practice can be invaluable for you as a storyteller. It's a great homework assignment. Well, we have almost one minute left. That was perfect timing, Nathan. Right. Thank you so much uh, to everyone for joining us on the day two of Illustration Week here on Adobe Live. Uh, we have one more stream left for the day. Uh, we have Anna Davis Court and Ari. Um, and that should be an amazing stream. Anna's as well. in the house, so yeah, we're looking, she is. looking hey, forward Anna. to seeing what's up. She's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, if we turn the camera around, she would be front and center. So thank you so much, guys. It's yeah. fantastic to be with you. And we have one more day tomorrow, and we'll continue working on this fabulous image. Color, color, color. Definitely. Thank you, Nathan. Thanks, everyone.